Hey guys, I just uh, shot another self-portrait. Um, I was trying to go for a blue and red sci-fi kind of a theme. Um, and I wanted to share a quick uh, video which uh, talks about the setup that I used in, in uh, making the self-portrait. Let's go to the setup for making this portrait. Uh, as you can see, I'm using um, a backdrop here. It's a custom hand painted back backdrop from uh, um, Unique Backdrops. Um, this is a two sided backdrop, one side is green, the one that you can see here, and then the other side of this is white, white concrete. Uh, I used the darker uh, background because I wanted, uh, overall, as I said, it's a sci fi effect that I'm going for, so I wanted a darkish look. Um, if we come here, uh, the red strap strip that you saw on my face is from this uh, flash with the barn doors. There's a red gel in there. It's one of those magnetic gels. So as you can see, it's a red gel. So put that back in, just sticks there. And then I basically made a split out of the barn door. Like so. And that's the, there. and that's the slip. Uh, that's the switch that you see across my face. Uh, this is my camera uh, right over here. Uh, that's where I didn't see myself. That's the overall blue ambience. So this light has, and if I open this up, it's a cross-water umbrella with a diffusion screen. Uh, so as you can see, this here, there's a blue gel in there for this uh, regular light. So that's what's throwing the blue cast. Uh, this is an umbrella medium, I think. Or large, sorry. It's a, it's a white umbrella. Umbrella white large with a diffusion in there. Um, yeah, it's on a, on a regular stand. And then I have this splash. Uh, since I have a, a very little room to work with, I have the this splash uh, mounted on a boom arm. Uh, I'll mount photo uh, boom arm and stand. Uh, this is a chair where I sat and yeah, uh, this is the backdrop that's on a C stand. The reason why it's up so high is because if you see here, the camera is actually looking uh, upward, and this is an ultra wide, not, not ultra wide, this is a wide angle lens. I'm shooting at 24 mil or 25 mil thereabouts. Um, so, yeah, so it kind of uh, takes in a wider perspective, and so that's why I have it quite high up on the C stand. This is the Avenger C stand that I have it on. I'm going to run you through how I edited this uh, self-portrait uh, just to give you a view of the steps that I take in usually editing these portraits. Um, the first step that I would usually do is that I would bring in the pictures into uh, Capture One. I like using Capture One because it gives me quite a bit of control in terms of um, editing picture quality, making specific adjustments in terms of color. Uh, etc. It's, it's overall uh, a great um, raw editor and I always shoot and draw as you can see here. Um, so these are the three pictures that I've selected. I actually ended up using just these two um, <clears throat> as the final ones. So if we go through this um, picture here, um, so uh, if we go to lens control, I really don't do anything here. It basically shows me which lens it's used and it applies automatic corrections, lens profile corrections to the picture, which is great. I don't usually do anything here unless the image is heavily distorted, which is in the case of this, uh, in this particular picture. Um, then if we go to the histogram panel, to the color panel essentially, uh, here I've made the picture a little bit more warmer. I initially shot it at uh, a daylight white balance, which is about 5200 to 5400. I just warmed it up a little bit. Um, what I also then did is, if you come here to the color editor, as you can see here, uh, I obviously wanted to enhance this red that you see here, the red red strip. So even though it is, it looks okay here, but then I also wanted to enhance it a little bit more. So as you see here, if I select this, it automatically selects an area which of that specific color um, and then if I 
look here, I just increase the smoothness to 12 so that it looks a little bit more smoother. Um, I really didn't do much to the greenish, bluish or the cyan areas uh, because they look good as it is. Um, now if we come here to the editing panel, um, I just added in a little bit of uh, exposure. So if you see, I added in a third of a stop of exposure. I added in a little bit of a contrast, so about 10 here. Um, I made a very small esker, a very slight esker. Uh, the picture anyways is quite dark. I didn't want to add in any extra contrast and lose details. So just for a little bit of a punch, I've added in um, a small S curve, uh, a little bit of clarity and structure, which brings some of the details in the skin and the texture. And then I applied a little bit of vignetting, although uh, it's quite a dark image still. Um, the reason why I applied vignetting is just to make sure that you know the we have a good focus towards the center of the image, which is, which is the face. Um, I really don't apply any additional sharpening, these are all default settings on Capture One. Um, the image was shot, as you can see, at f7.1, so it's quite sharp. And usually the way I would check the sharpness is using the loop tool, and as you can see here, it's really sharp in, in here. Uh, once I'm done here, uh, that's pretty much all I would do in Capture One. I export the images into Photoshop, so let's go to Photoshop and have a look there. Um, so if I come to Photoshop, let me walk you through the various layers. This is the final um, final image. Um, let me actually go ahead and deselect all of these so we know what's happening. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, this is the image that I imported from um, Capture One. Um, uh, after importing from Capture One, I wanted to get rid of some of the blemishes and the skin, etc. So I applied frequency se separation. There are tutorials out there that uh, that tell you how to do frequency separation. You can go watch them on YouTube. So I applied fre frequency separation to get rid of the um, blemishes. Uh, on top of that, I applied uh, um, a curve adjustment layer to uh, highlight the catch lights in the eyes and then I enhance the catch lights a little bit more just to give it a little bit of a pop out. Um, after that I always like to desaturate my images a little bit because I was feeling that um, the overall cyan tones were a little bit too much. Um, and then I had a contrast using the black and white layer. So as you can see here, it's um, very subtle. The, the reason why I use the black and white layer so usually what I do is I would just go into the adjustments panel I would click on the black and white layer and I would select the opacity to about 10% or 20% and then just do an overlay what that does is it doesn't add in an extra brightness if you would usually use the brightness and contrast adjustment layer or adjustment tool it would add in um, as you increase the, the contrast, it would also brighten the image a little bit. If I use the um, uh, the black and white adjustment tool, it doesn't do that. Uh, post that, I wanted to um, do a little bit of a dodge and burn. I like using dodge and burn using the gradient map tool. And if I click here, you can see I've adjusted the various levels of gradients uh, within the, the image. And you can move these sliders uh, left and right in order to um, identify what areas of highlights you want to retain the image and what areas of um, shadows you want to retain. The left towards the black are the shadows and the areas towards the right towards the white are, are, are highlights. Um, yeah, and then I wanted to enhance the red as you can see here. So I did that using a selective color panel so selective color adjustment panel so I go here I've just improved increased the black levels in the red so it kind of makes it more contrasty and pops them out and then um, I didn't want the the effect to apply all over the image because there are certain red casts as you can see in this area of the image for example uh, which are like light leaks uh, from the barn doors I didn't want the um, I didn't want this effect to apply here, so I basically created a mask 
gonna do stay here. This is where the mask really applies in that area of red. That's where I wanted to wanted this effect to apply. Um, then I add a little bit of noise. It kind of makes uh, takes away any um, any gradients or any other abnormalities from the picture, and it kind of gives it a nice uh, film-like look. And then I also uh, wanted to add a little bit of a movie or a Hollywood kind of a title, which I did using the text tool. I just you know added the text in and brushed, created and created a layer, um, a layer mask, and then just masked out the areas which were on top of my face. Um, and yeah, um, that's it. I have also created a sort of lighting diagram which kind of explains the uh, the way I lit this image. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, that, that was the setup of my uh, self-portrait shirt number two. Uh, I hope you guys like it, and I hope that you learned something from it. Um, if you guys uh, think that you know, these, are, these are cool ideas, and you would want to try these out yourself. Try them out, uh, post them on Instagram, tag me. Um, and I'd, I'd love to have a look at those and, and share my thoughts. Thanks.